Scientists and experts are claiming that nanotechnology holds the promise for greater applications, bringing new advances and discoveries in areas like information technology, alternative energy, and health and medicine. It was once believed that asbestos would revolutionize the world. Instead, asbestos turned out to be one of the worst occupational health disasters in U.S. history, causing pulmonary fibrosis, a scarring of the lung tissue, or even mesothelioma, a very rare form of cancer. In this episode of Science in the Triangle, we'll travel over to NC State University to visit Dr. Jamie Bonner to learn more about his research on the potential toxicity of carbon nanotubes. We're studying how carbon nanotubes uh, affect the lung and whether they cause disease in mice. Uh, we want to know how long they stay there after the, the mice inhale them uh, or do they get cleared from the lung? Do the, is, does the lung get rid of them like it would normally uh, inhaled particles? Carbon nanotubes are long, thin cylinders of carbon, roughly 10,000 times smaller than the width of a human hair. These molecular scale tubes are stronger than steel, yet lighter than aluminum, and today they are being developed for use in a variety of consumer products. But under a microscope, carbon nanotubes look similar to asbestos fibers, leading scientists to believe that they could cause similar health problems. Essentially, carbon nanotubes are shaped like asbestos fibers. Asbestos fibers are very long, needle-like structures uh, compared to most other particles that we inhale in the lung, which are spherical or round, and they're easy to clear from the lung. If I use this sphere here as a nanoparticle that is inhaled into the lung, a macrophage will engulf it and clear it from the lung. Now if it is a longer type of structure, more like this computer cable, this would be more the dimensions of an asbestos fiber or, or a nanotube, even though a nanotube would be much thinner. A macrophage attaches to the, the fiber or the tube now and it has a very difficult time clearing it and getting it out of the lung. Bonner and his team of researchers study macrophages derived from the lungs of mice. These amoeba-like cells defend our bodies by cleaning up all kinds of inhaled particles. Bonner's team injects these cells with carbon nanotubes to determine what effect they may have on their cellular functions. Right now, there are a lot of unanswered questions we just don't know. We don't know if carbon nanotubes are going to be another asbestos. Uh, we don't know if um, uh, factors that we put on our skin for sunscreens containing nanomaterials are going to cause adverse effects. But we need to, to do the work uh, to find out, and as toxicologists, that's our responsibility. With all of these concerns and unanswered questions, I asked Dr. Bonner if the public should be concerned about the field of nanotechnology. I don't want people to be afraid of nanotechnology. There are many uh, great benefits uh, that will come from nanotechnology and energy and in medicine and in engineering. Uh, it'll, it'll change the, the world that we live in. At the same time, uh, I want the progress that we make in this technology to be accompanied by uh, safety. And anytime we're dealing with new materials, we need to know more about them and be safe about their design and be safe about uh, the way they're used uh, and the way we get exposed to them.